I've kept chickens since I was six years old, and they are wonderful birds. We would order them every May from our local farm supply store and watch them grow all summer. Every few years, a hen of our own would go broody, and she would hatch out a half a dozen or so tiny little perfect fluffy ping pong balls. They are first very slimy, because when they're hatched, they've just finished absorbing the last of the yolk. They kind of look like little aliens for a while. I think they're beautiful, though. And then you get to watch them grow. And they live, and you eat their eggs, and collect all the feathers they drop. And then they get sick, and they grow old, and they get hurt, and they die. And you love them. And you move on. A layer hen can live up to ten years on its own naturally, but they get taken, and they get hit by cars, and they get sick. Nothing has taught me more about letting go and change than watching the lives and the deaths of my birds. The first hen that ever hatched out chicks on the property was not named. I think she was one of a half dozen Rhode Island Reds that we couldn't tell apart, so we just called them, Hey, Missy, or Hey, Honey. And then she, when Broody started sitting, and she hatched four beautiful little chicks, and she was Mama Hen ever since. She outlived every single one of uh, those babies. Pretty impressive. And then, a few years later, after she had watched all of her own children get taken in accidents and all sorts of different ways, uh, one morning, I think I, it was me myself, actually, that went out to the hen house to let them out for the day, and she was just dead. No wounds. Not to be gross, but her cloaca was healthy. She was old, and it was her time. And it was very sad. But I'm happy that she got to live her days with us. A uh, less nice death um, happened a few years later. We had a pair of male Peking ducks. Uh, no females with them. So those two responded to each other. They were friends. And then one night when I went to go out to chase them into the house, I couldn't find one of them. And I walked over to the other side of the house where I couldn't see. And there was the body of one of the ducks with no head. And I immediately ran away. Um, we found his partner duck shaking and shock thankfully had survived but we brought him in he spent a few nights in our bathtub but he never really recovered from his partner's death it was very sad he was a very lonely duck until he himself was taken by a predator the most difficult thing i have had to go through what actually happened this past summer um, the majority of our flock, uh, ducks and hens, were, uh, killed by coyotes, and we decided, well, we should hatch what eggs we have left and see what happens. And out of the 20 eggs, uh, only six combined duck and chicken eggs even started to hatch, and out of those six... Uh, three ducks and one chick hatched, um, and one of the ducks only lived for a few hours. So at the end, um, I had three adult chickens and two adult ducks, and one ch one chick and two ducklings. Uh, when a few months earlier I had had a uh, half a dozen hens and a rooster and uh, six ducks. And when I see Ruth, Gobo, and Scooter, the young ones, 
it's a reminder of the ones who aren't alive. Um, unfortunately, both the female ducks that we that supplied the eggs for Gobo and Scooter were taken by that coyote. Ruth's mother and her father are thankfully still with us, but um, none of the other um, none of her mother Cersei's sisters uh, survived. So she's the last of uh, the chickens that were born on our property. But that's okay, because I see them and I, they're living memories of the birds that are no longer with us. And I see them and it's a reminder that I can still love the birds that I've lost while letting go of the grief and still loving the ones that are alive today.